I'm finally home. I'm finally, finally, finally home. Um, during the day, oh my gosh, it, not even like during the day while I was at work, while I was getting ready to go to work, I was just like huffing and puffing. I really need to start um, regulating my breath and like just regularly exercising. Um, that's by the way, but, um, I'm dreading going into work. I don't do hard labor. I uh, work on, um, uh, with filing and yet I just don't want to go in. It's a lot for me. And I've already been reassigned to a different department and yet um, I'm, I'm just not learning my lesson. When I was a correctional officer, I just constantly found myself expressing, oh my God, I'm not, I can't do this for a long time. I'm just not going to be here. And, and I always felt it within me. Um, keep my eyes open. I would constantly come home and look for work. I would apply to other jobs. I would let people know that we're in the sector of, um, uh, what's it called? Um, places just where you can go and put your name and then like they'll call you and just say, are you interested in this or that? But they were always <laughs> offering like 15 and $17 while I was getting paid 27. So I wasn't going to leave until, unless it was like 27 or 26 or 25. Be, um, um, if it meant a way better culture, way better environment. I did not like any, and, and the feeling was mutual. Um, there was definitely a handful of people that I really enjoyed talking to, but it was in comparison to the witches that I, that were working in there. They were just really, there's no regulation for like um, working and having camaraderie and teamwork and stuff. None of that there. So it's anything goes. And so the, um, you know, having that quality while you're being interviewed, it's not questioned. It's not interrogated at all. It's not. So that's what I'm working with, but that's what I was working with. And so I was constantly several times the, the day um, before I went in, oh, I'm not going to be working here for a long time. And so it happened. <laughs> I also wasn't going to work on time. And so it happened and I was getting uh, written up and um, I got that last write up and I got the call. I need to be. <laughs> I need to sit before the panel uh, because in this particular organization, you can't get, it's not that you can't get fired. The process in getting fired uh, um, starts off with sitting before the, um, not police chiefs, the chiefs in the sheriff's department. And so I was late. I was so late. The meeting had to just end because it had already started and I wasn't present and they had to reschedule. And so, um, they ended up just calling me on the phone and say, Hey, um, we're going to reassign you to a, uh, we're going to demote you and put you in a different department. And so now I'm there, I'm in that different department and I'm getting paid, um, $9 less. And I find myself saying this again and it's going to happen. I'm going to, uh, now being demoted is me sitting in my car. So <laughs> me laying down, be me right where I'm at right now, just on my couch, <laughs> So I'm not trying to get demoted. Um, um, I even want to feel um, bad about that. But when I got the call, I felt, I felt, oh my gosh, it happened. I felt, sh I don't, have you felt like shock, but then you're aware of it was coming? Like, so it was simultaneous. I did feel like, oh, okay, this is how it's happening. It's happening right now. And also relief. I remember being like, oh my God, I never have to go back to that area of the jail again. Oh my God, I'm even able to relieve it now. And um, so there was relief there. And there's still relief now, presently, um, in comparison to that part, um, just being directly with the inmates. Mm, that wasn't it was really just with the um that those particular that particular group of um that position as a correctional officer in that tower that I was experiencing but um now I just, it's I don't want it I don't want it but this is what I attest to what caused 
the demotion as opposed to just being um, transitioning into something more preferable. Yes, I had my eyes open. Yes, I um, verbalized that um, to others what I'm looking for, um, but it didn't per contain what duties or what job title or anything. Um, I'm not looking for a job ever again in life, but I definitely want to and need to make money so I can pay my bills and um, eat and um, take care of myself and my children. But um, it's going to happen again. The words that are coming out of my mouth that I con con that I constantly repeat are, are going to manifest. And uh, when they when it happens, my lights flicker, my dimmer is flickering. So I was like, I'm trying to trip. Nah, but um, uh, it's I I want to convey to those listening to this video that um, it is imperative, but the same thing happened, <laughs> glory be to God, February 6, 2023, when I started January 6th, but it uh, manifest, when I say manifest, it, it became a reality, I just really get, I, I don't cringe at the term, just like the rainbow, it's so beautiful, but it just, um, people have hijacked it and and just pumped it up with another meaning that I I don't feel 100% comfortable um using a rainbow coloring a rainbow wearing a rainbow shirt it's unfair <laughs> um but with the term manifest it's it's an English term um but when when I see videos on social media I immediately scroll because I'm <laughs> I don't want your evil witch powers coming through my phone. Um, so let me use a synonym. Uh, um, January 6th last year, I, uh, January 1st last year, I was just like, I am not going into another year with this fear and anxiety. And I did not like and enjoy I was just tired of being um yeah tired of being tired and so that's what motivated me to do some to want to do something I didn't know what to do and so um I wrote down what exactly what I wanted which is a white house and it um and I wanted it to be beautiful um so just so I could have some calmness there I wanted it to be beautiful and I wanted to be able to afford it so am I talking about the 23rd yeah the 23rd and so, um, the job I had already gotten had, they was like, here, you want this bonus? So I got, they gave some money, but I kept repeating that same, what I, I was looking for, what I was looking for, along with a deliverance prayer by Derek Prince online. And, um, by February 6th, I sat down with a friend at, um, she was showing some houses or something like that she's a realtor and she was having some kind of meeting with uh, someone and uh, she was like, Hey, I can meet you later. So I met up with her uh, as soon as she was done. Um, just a restaurant in that same area. And, she, and I told her my story and she was just like, I can help you. I know someone. And he, she knew the owner of this house that I'm renting. And, um, I, she was like, here, message him. I messaged him. He was like, shoot me, shoot me the first month's rent shot him the money he was like uh, keys are this is how you get the key <laughs> in 30 days I was like I cannot go through this year I cannot in January 6th I was like uh, January 1st I was like I can't do go through this year can't go through this year but like, January 6th is when I wrote down what I wanted and my house is predominantly white now and it's beautiful to me. Um, I think I got a job and I can decorate it the way I want. And so I'm going through that right now. I don't like, it's not that I just don't like this job. It also me, does not like me. And so there are confrontations spewing out, but that's not the biggest problem. I'm physically tired. <laughs> and also it doesn't match the schedule um, for the best safety of my children. And um, the doing all this work for such little money is 
to me dumb. There's so many other ways. And I just want Yahweh to open up my mind and allow me to use the creativity. I have six books out online on Amazon. I have um, the skill to be a ghostwriter for others. Um, I um, have the ability to write for um, just scripts and com I don't know about comedy because I haven't, but um, I just want to use the, the talent that I know that I have. What kind of life would that be? Um, the inventions that I have been using my money for, I would love to see the fruit of it all, the financial fruit of it all and live off of it and be a blessing to my siblings, my, my parents, myself, uh, my children. Um, it's just this, what I'm living just doesn't make sense. And so the only thing I'm repeating is I'm tired and I'm, I, I, I don't want to be in this job. I don't want to see the inside of this gel again. Um, but if I can remember what has helped me just a year ago, which was writing down exactly what I wanted, which is Habakkuk 3, 2. Everybody was like, Habakkuk, write it down and make it plain so that it could be delivered, um, so that you could run with it. Um, I'm close. I'm not on it. I don't know if it's, I know it's Habakkuk. I know it's 3. Um, I think I used to think it was two, two, but I think it's three, three, um, or three, two, it starts with three, two and three, three, um, r write the plan down and make it plain. But, um, I've written it down and I've made it plain and, um, there's a doubt trying to spew in saying you've done this in the past, but your life hasn't really drastically changed. Yes, it has. And I've. I was able to leave uh, mistreatment and be aware of the severity of the mistreatment that I was experiencing. And so glory be to God for that. Um, Cause denial just have you enduring for no reason. <laughs> um, but I submit that onto you guys. I want to encourage and grow with um, anyone who is willing to, to, to be aware of where they are and understand that the world has so many more beautiful things to offer you. And they're the creations of God that created you. And asking God, may I be in contact with that thing, is like a child asking their parent, may I have what is inside that store? And the parent may or may not have the means, but I know that... Um, it becomes a desire of their theirs to to um, give to that child that listens and obeys and abides. Um, if it doesn't take them away from God's will, from the parents' instruction, or doesn't bring harm to them, um, God does literally bless us with our prayers. Um, but um, this time is going to be. Let it be in your will, Father God, uh, so that I'm not praying to get out of it or praying to change this or that. Um, <laughs> I keep looking at my screen, even though it's my light that's flickering. Got my coils. You guys have a wonderful night. It is night as I'm taping this, but glory be to God for every and all things that I have and don't have right now. Glory be to God to you and where you are and the condition that you're in. Um, I know that it's Paul that says, wherever we were, whenever we go, we receive Christ, stay in that position and remain in that position and glorify him that way. I don't know if it says glorify him that way, but it does say stay where we are. So I'm also going to pray for my contentment so that if I'm blessed with a mansion and a hundred million dollars and so much territory that I still am able to have the ability to have satisfaction and contentment, not, Oh, let me have this too. Pull horses. Now, now at a stable, blah, blah, blah. Father God, where I am right now. I know this is an answered prayer. I lift my hands up in praise and I am thankful. Blessings unto you, Father God, have a good night's sleep. And I pray for contentment. I pray for your prayers also to be answered and may it be in God's will.